Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're back here at the museum, and while it might not seem like I've done a lot here lately, I have been hard at work behind the scenes deciding how our first exhibit is going to look, and today we are going to build that exhibit. I'm very excited about it. Over here, this dotted line marks out the area where we are going to have the exhibit about dirt and grass and dirt variants. Basically, all of the coarse dirt and mycelium and grass path and all of that kind of stuff is going to be represented in this room here and that's going to lead out into other rooms about trees and about flowers things you can plant on dirt and then around the rest of the exhibits here that are going to make up the basics basically the early stuff in minecraft all of the stuff that you you get as part of the first few days of any new minecraft world and so i have a lot of work to do and for that i have brought over a few shulker boxes of materials you can tell what color scheme we're going with already can't you i mean it was kind of obvious from the concrete i laid out to begin with and I've been drafting some of this in a creative mode test world that is basically a copy of this world that I can just, you know, spitball ideas in. And I honestly recommend doing that if you're planning a build this large because it will save you a lot of time in that trial and error phase that we all love to get stuck into a little bit later. I've also got a bunch of materials here that I brought over from Founders Forge and I may need to dip into the museum archives to get myself a little bit more wood. But I'm excited about the design of this, so we're going to give it a go. There's going to be several time lapses, I expect, in this episode, but the first thing I'm going to do off camera, and that's just to lay a floor down in here so that we can have a nice dark oak wood floor that continues from the museum entrance hall. And you know what? I think we're probably going to have this dip down one block between here and here. So we're actually going to lay out the floor where this layer of grass is here. So that was about eight stacks of grass removed and eight stacks of dark oak planks put in. We could have saved some material if we wanted to go with slabs, but I actually want the floors here to be solid because we will end up constructing some stuff underneath these a little bit as well. But I made sure this is the midpoint of the room so we have a nice through line to the room beyond where we're going to have the exhibit about trees. There is going to be another exit on this wall which I think is actually going to be probably around there rather than in the middle. Don't want all of these rooms to be symmetrical all of the time. We want to create a bit more of an organic shape to these things especially given the theme of the exhibit. Now the next thing we're going to be doing is lining the outer walls in stripped birch, which is actually one of my favorite stripped tree textures, one of my favorite tree textures in general. I really, really like the way stripped birch looks, and I don't get to use it all that often. Not so here. And the reason I want to use it here is to create a bit of a contrast to the materials we're going to be placing in here. Since we are mainly working with brown materials in the form of dirt and, you know, the side textures of all of the dirt variants like podzol and grass also look brown like dirt i wanted to have a lighter block in the walls to contrast with that stuff not only that but stripped birch actually looks fantastic when combined with green material where did i put all of that green concrete and stuff yeah so all of this is going to make a delightful color palette for this room you can kind of see it there already but lime terracotta green terracotta and green concrete are all going to blend fantastically together to form the main wall of this area but this lower area is going to be trimmed with stripped birch and i'm not going to build the entire walls and roof of this room before we've built anything on the inside because one of my main objectives here is to make sure that we can fit all of the information we want to fit into this area and the area seems quite large now but once it's filled up with all of the stuff that we want to put in here it's actually going to seem like hopefully just the right amount of space but I don't want to start building the full dimensions of this room until I am certain that I've got everything I want to out of the space so while we're going to build out this low wall around the outside just so it feels a little bit more complete to begin with and we can visualize what the whole exhibit will look like I'm not going to put the walls and the roof on any higher than this until I know that I've got what I want out of it. And that was a fair amount of birch, although not as much as I expected. I actually brought a lot that's still left over in these chests just to make sure that we had enough to do the walls with, and we've certainly got enough material here that we can work on a little exhibit together. So we're going to start out with grabbing all of the dirt and dirt variants. We've got some grass, some dirt, some coarse dirt, some mycelium, some podzol, and actually some more grass because we're going to be including grass path and farmland in this exhibit as well. And I have a bunch of glass here. 
<laughs> which kind of sounds a little bit like grass if you don't think about it too much. We're going to be putting the glass around the outside of the blocks, although not in a way that makes it look like the blocks are just in a glass case. I really want it to feel like the materials in the museum are more interactive than that. And so if we can have the grass on display out here and just surround it with glass like so, then it kind of feels like you can just come up and touch it without necessarily having the glass go all the way over the top and around the sides like that. It will also mean that you can get a closer look at the block without any of the other textures from the glass getting in the way. And so that's kind of the approach I'm preferring for this whole museum layout. So we're gonna have them surrounded in these kind of almost sofa-like constructions of glass like this. And we're gonna have some dirt here next to the grass. It kind of makes sense for grass and dirt to be the first things you see as you come into this exhibit and turn left. And then we're gonna have coarse dirt one block apart from that, because of course, dirt and coarse dirt have slightly different looks. So it makes sense to contrast the two next to each other. We're also gonna have podzol next to that. And then mycelium adjacent to the podzol, one block over from there. And then this last section here is going to be grass path. And that's going to be shoveled like so. And we've got two blocks spare at the ends, just like we have down here. Once I put the glass in, it'll be a one block gap just there. And we're not quite ready to put the glass in just yet because I want to make sure that this area is adequately lit. Otherwise, this whole thing, once it gets a roof on it, is going to be a mob spawning haven. So I'm probably going to put two sea lanterns behind each of these exhibits to make sure the exhibits themselves are well lit. And I like the idea of having underfloor lighting in this room. It's certainly going to make the exhibits stand out if we ever wander through here with shaders enabled, but it's also going to make sure that the lighting doesn't have to be dangled from the ceiling. We might do some aesthetic lighting from the ceiling later, but of course the safest place to put your lighting as far as getting rid of mob spawns is going to be in the floor like so. So we'll probably just conceal it behind those. You can't really see much of the lanterns as you're walking around the exhibit. If we wanted to, we could even put some blocks in there at the corners to make sure that you couldn't just see the lanterns glimpsed through the sides of blocks as you're wandering around. But it really doesn't matter all that much in the grand scheme of things, and it'll mean that the area stays well lit. So in my creative test copy of this world, I decided to have six blocks along the wall here. I measured it out a couple of times, drafted a couple of things, and it seemed like it made the most sense to have these all nicely spaced out like this. Also, having glass in between these prevents the grass from spreading over onto the dirt and so forth. So they couldn't all just be in one long line because then the dirt would eventually just become grass. And we're going to actually demonstrate that elsewhere in this room. But you'll notice that farmland is also missing here. And so what we're going to do over in this corner here is demonstrate some of the mechanics that grass and dirt are associated with specifically grass spread and mycelium spread which we're going to demonstrate next to each other like so in these kind of little areas here and opposite that I think about there, just leaving a little bit of space between the two, we're going to be demonstrating some stuff about farmland. And this is going to be where some of the more interactive elements of the museum come into play, because I did mention previously that I wanted this museum to feel like something that you could go in and actually mess around with some of the stuff. Like when you go to museums in real life, they will often have exhibits which have things you can walk up to and touch and listen to audio clips. And there's a lot of interactivity that happens in museums to make sure that people stay kind of engaged with what they're looking at. And so around here, I want to have some lecterns that you can look at to read information, but I also want to have some chests and stuff like that, which have materials you can use to interact with these blocks. Right here, for example, what I want to do is have a chest with a block of grass and a block of mycelium, which you can place into these recesses in here and observe grass spread in action. We're going to need to make sure this area is lit up, which we're probably going to do by a sea lantern kind of hanging down here, but that's going to make sure the grass and mycelium have adequate light for the spread mechanics to take effect once a roof is on this entire thing. So I guess we'll use some of those extra birch logs that I brought over with me, and we're going to put some chests in here. We're going to have one in the floor there, which I'll probably put a sea lantern underneath so that we can once again conceal some lighting here and make sure the floor level is lit up. We're going to have a lectern there, and we're probably going to have some chests on either side of a pillar section here, and those are going to contain hoes so that you can have a go at hoeing this dirt into farmland. This side is going to be hydrated, this side is not going to be hydrated, and you'll be able to test out whether or not 
the farmland stays hydrated once you hoe it. And that will give visitors the chance to really play around with dirt and grass in this context. And it's going to make a lot of sense for some of these things to be interactive. We'll probably bring like wooden tools in here. I'm not exactly going to put a netherite hoe in this chest or anything, but maybe some stone tools or something like that as well. We could give that a try. And it's going to feel like kids could come up here and play around with some of the stuff that we're working with here. I also want to have a crafting station here for something like coarse dirt. It kind of makes sense for players to be able to mess around with whether or not they can craft coarse dirt. And so I'm going to place some crafting tables here. It's going to feel once again like an area that kids will be able to come up and play around with this stuff. And maybe we can create the look of a table a little bit by having some stairs inverted facing into these sections here like so. Yeah, that kind of works for me. I might end up making that out of oak instead of dark oak because I think the dark oak blends a little bit too much with the floor. Whereas oak would blend in better with the crafting tables. But you get the idea. And in here is where we're going to have a bunch of dirt and a bunch of gravel kind of in the 2x2 two two formation that you find it in the crafting recipe. Which is going to make it kind of more obvious to people who are visiting that you can craft coarse dirt out of that combination of materials. There we go, we've got our coarse dirt making supplies in this chest in that 2x2 two two formation and I've even added some example coarse dirt in this chest here to give people a better idea of what it is they're making. In this chest over here we're going to leave a few grass blocks and a few mycelium blocks implying that you can put the grass block in that one, the mycelium block in that one and all we would really need to do is come through, break all of these blocks and replace them again for the mycelium and the grass to start taking over. Now I need to dive into the village box in my ender chest and grab a bunch of lecterns. These are all going to have written books on them with different information about the exhibits here and I imagine we'll probably write those up off camera because because doing all of that on camera is going to be a lot of writing that you guys won't necessarily be super interested in. But I imagine we'll come up with some sort of like standardized format for these books which are going to make them look a little bit more fancy. But I want to have information about each of these and there's just too much information here to be contained simply with a single sign. So maybe we might have a sign on here that just says grass or something like that but then if you read the book it says grass it says where to find it how you can craft it if you can craft it maybe a little bit of information about the mechanics what the grass can be turned into that kind of stuff so the exhibit on coarse dirt for example is going to say that you can find it naturally in a mega tigers you can harvest it with a shovel you can use a hoe on it to turn it back into regular dirt that kind of stuff and while of course this exhibit could also go into all of the different types of things we can grow on each of these I really feel like those deserve their own exhibit which is why that's going to be through the next room basically to the area all about plants and flowers the area about trees is going to be on this side as well so the types of trees that you will find around these blocks are obviously going to be through the next room and we have a lot to say about trees so that's going to be a massive exhibit with all of the different types of trees on display. There is one more mechanic I want to showcase in this room and that is the making of grass into grass path and so we're going to have another one of these little kind of three by three squares in the corner here. We're going to leave one grass block underneath here so that the grass can propagate once it is turned into grass path, taken up again and then turned into dirt and the dirt will be able to spread the grass back to it. And to make sure that this block of grass stays unharmed in the center we can place a glass block above that which is not going to revert it into dirt because it's a transparent block that will not block light to the block below it and that's going to allow for the grass to remain there and for it to spread back to these blocks if you turn them into grass path and then at the end of the day maybe people would come through and clean up the exhibits that people have been messing with throughout the day. But I like the idea of there being a nice area where you can mess around with grass path. There'll be a shovel in a chest here so that you can mess around with the tools that are required to make grass path and then the grass will just spread to it from the center. And I think overall this is a pretty good sample of the kind of stuff I want to do with the museum here. I want to explain a little bit about the mechanics of each block, explain where you can find them and how to craft them and all that kind of stuff. But this is leaving us with a fair amount of area here in the center of the floor and I don't really want to do too much with this. I don't want to throw a bunch of stuff in people's way as they're walking around but I still want to have some kind of centerpiece to the floor here just to make it look like you know it's to make it obvious what exhibit you're walking into if it was unclear and so what I think I might do here is dig up a section of the floor centered with the entrance and exit to this room the 
entrance to the the main hall the exit to the tree exhibit here i think what we're going to do is dig out the floor here and put a little grass exhibit in the center giving an idea of what grass looks like in its natural habitat which we can get a quick sample of underneath the floor here <laughs> the kind of plains environment with grass and tall grass growing out of it so we're going to have a grass section of the floor here and i think around the outside of that i want a border of some kind i want it to blend in with the floor a little bit so what we're going to do is create a ring of dark oak stairs around the outside which is going to make this whole thing stand out and also make it so that you can see the sides of the blocks as well so it's obvious that this is grass and not you know some sort of imitation like green concrete or something like that so i think that's looking pretty good the other cool thing about the stairs around the outside here is that if i make some glass panes out of a few stacks of this glass we can ring the outside of this with glass panes which will sit right on the outside of the stairs there and that will really give this whole thing a feel like it's an exhibit like it's kind of roped off and you're not supposed to mess with it unlike the interactive stuff that is all around it i think down the center of this we may place the occasional grass block just so it kind of stands out a little bit like that we're probably not going to have anything attached to the glass panes on the side so we're just going to have to deal with having a few blocks of it down the middle there but that is still enough room to walk around the outside and mess with the exhibits here there's plenty of room for you to walk between these exhibits and i think i'm also going to do what i did in my creative copy of this and maybe add another ring to the outside like that so the indentation is really obvious it kind of separates this whole bit from the rest of the floor around the outside and then we're going to have to put in some more underfloor lighting before we put in the walls and the roof otherwise like i said this area is going to be full of mobs before long plenty of bone meal around as well from where we turned the warped and crimson warp blocks into some bone meal over at the farm and i think we'll probably remove most of the tall grass from this maybe leave one or two blocks here and there and i don't want too many flowers to be in here in case people end up thinking this is the flower exhibit but yeah i quite like that as a centerpiece i think it's quite nice <laughs> kind of gets the message across at least we could always mix in a couple of pieces of grass path or coarse dirt or something if we wanted to but i don't want this thing to feel too cluttered i do want it to feel like quite a nice centerpiece in the middle here so we'll take out a few of the flowers and i think that's probably gonna be good leaving a bit of space between the centerpiece and the lecterns here i want to probably put in some underfloor lighting every couple of blocks here and we're going to do that by putting a sea lantern one block down and then having a piece of brown glass over the top of it which should hopefully blend with the floor in a subtle enough way that you're not really going to notice the lighting too much as you wander around the place once again i do want to conceal these lights underneath other stuff where i can get away with it though so we're going to keep the lights underneath the chests there and this one here is in the floor simply because there is a lectern in front of it like that but i think that's actually going to work out pretty well we could also place a lectern next to this chest to give people an idea of what's in the chest and why you can see the grass is already starting to spread there which is fantastic and i think as far as lighting goes that is not too bad i'm going to do a quick lighting check around the sides of the room we'll probably need to put some lighting in the corners here but i have some ideas for that there's going to be lighting over the top of this for the grass spread mechanics anyway and we probably want to add a little bit more detail to the outside of the room as far as this whole exhibit goes though i think that's a pretty decent balance of stuff versus space for you to walk around and look at the stuff i think we don't want to crowd this room too much it doesn't want to feel like a set of tiny corridors that people can walk around it wants to feel open and inviting and a place that you want to come and study all of this stuff so now that i'm happy with the exhibit itself it is time to go ahead and decorate the rest of this room we need to get the wall designs in we need to figure out what we're doing with the roof and i have a couple of ideas for how we're going to dress up the doorways to each place as well so let's kick this into a different gear and let's do that in the form of a time lapse
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. I love the way this room came together. Don't you? It just feels very complete. It feels like one of the first things I've actually seen through from start to finish and I think it looks pretty great. I'm really happy with the tree that I built as the gateway through to the trees exhibit. I think that really sets the scene nicely and outside of the time lapse I thought wouldn't it be great if we hung a few lanterns in the tree just to light up the blocks around there and make it a little bit easier to see because I was editing that time lapse and I had to switch back to the regular vanilla Minecraft from the shaders just because that tree was so dark up in the ceiling there you really couldn't see it all that well. But I love the arc of the ceiling here we've got this nice kind of like barrel ceiling almost and I really like the arc of the sea lanterns there but you saw the rest of the exhibit with the exception of these I have actually started putting in the books. Most of these are not done yet but I thought I would play around with some of the settings for formatting books and aside from the fancy border I've put around this you will notice that we have some kind of interesting text here. We have a green emboldened text and as we flip through the book to read a little bit of information found throughout the world grass blocks are one of the first resources a player encounters though they may be one of the later blocks you obtain since the silk touch enchantment is required to obtain it. If you mine a grass block without silk touch it becomes dirt and I've actually been able to highlight some of the key words in this just for the sake of readability. Now obviously if folks are colorblind you might not want to do this too much but I've found that it kind of helps the player look through certain aspects of this book if you have certain terms highlighted so that people can see that that is something they need to pay attention to. Otherwise it just tends to look like a wall of black text and you find yourself skim reading it without actually taking in the information. Once you get past that page, I decided just to go with a regular black text by way of contrast, explaining that uh, grass blocks aren't craftable but are renewable and that grass has a variety of colors depending on which biome it's in. If directly covered by an opaque block, grass blocks revert into dirt and then tilling them creates a farmland or using a shovel on it creates grass path. I feel like that's an adequate amount of information for a grass block. We don't want players to get too bogged down in the detail and having like 15 pages of stuff to read about a grass block, but I wanted to show you guys how you do some of this formatting with written books, since I know a lot of people will get kind of interested in exactly how this is done. You can't do it through any interface that is available in the game, but you can use a few really neat tricks to do this. And this lectern here actually has a few more examples of that. We're gonna take a quick look at formatting codes. And for that, you will need to get used to this very special character here. So this is the section sign, and it's a key that I don't actually have on my keyboard. It's probably available through a keyboard shortcut somewhere, but I actually had to go to the Windows character map to find it. Alternatively, you can just open up the formatting codes section of the Minecraft wiki, and you'll have a character there that you can copy and paste. And by copying that and adding any of the numbers or letters you see here will produce one of these effects when you go to write a book. And you can actually chain multiples of these together to get, for example, green emboldened text. I've got a few written books in my inventory here, more than a few actually, because I figured I may as well bring over a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how this works. So we're going to open up the book, which thankfully also pauses time in a single player world, and I'm going to paste that character into the book. Now you'll notice that it doesn't actually show up as a character yet, and if I type a 1 after it, that doesn't show up either. But then what happens is any text I start to type appears in dark blue, because I've set the code section sign 1 in the front of that, and it has actually done something to the text. Now if I return to the beginning of the line right here using the arrow keys and I backspace a couple of times, you'll notice that it disappears for a second and then it reappears. The letter T there just ended up disappearing and that is because when I type the section sign in, it chooses the next character in the set of characters that's already there to try and turn that into some sort of code. In this case, there is nothing that comes up when you type section T. Let's say I want to embolden this though. If I press the letter L, all of the text after that becomes emboldened because section sign L is the embolden key. And you can chain these together. So if I paste another section sign in here and hit four, suddenly now that is red. And if I type another section sign and put L, 
it becomes red and emboldened. So you can actually chain together a bunch of these to produce a variety of effects. Let's also add section sign and N, and now all of that text is emboldened, red, and underlined. So as you can see, a lot of stuff is going on here, and we can use all of this to our advantage when we're working on books like this. Now on the Minecraft wiki, it seems to indicate that typing section sign R should reset the text, but I've found that is not the case. It doesn't seem to work that way for me. So what I've found instead is that doing section zero resets everything to black default, which is, you know, nice and straightforward to use. The other one you might have been slightly confused by in that example book I had back there was section sign K, which leads to obfuscated text. And you'll notice this kind of acts similarly to some of the obscured terms in the end poem, if you've seen the end poem that plays after you've beaten the dragon and jumped through the end portal for the first time. This way, basically anything you write will show up as this kind of scrambled, constant rotation of characters. And you'll notice there's even like playing cards and dice in there if you look closely, because it's scrolling through all the available characters in, I think, the Unicode library very, very quickly. And that basically means that any text you see there will be scrambled, which doesn't really do anything. You can't decode it or anything, but it is kind of fun to look at that in terms of roleplay stuff. For example, if you want to redact certain sections of a document, you can use obfuscated text to do that, or just to make something that looks a little bit scrambled and mystical, and maybe like a book of magic that is somehow coming to life on the page. But the result of that is that we can do some really neat stuff with book editing, and having a title page like that and then the other terms highlighted on the page, I think it's really going to add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of flair to how we're presenting information using lecterns here, in the museum. And I think, folks, this is a pretty great first exhibit, and I think that's where we're going to wrap things up for this episode. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.